awesome YouTubers. I'm here with my circuit car review special. Um, it took me quite a while. I haven't still got all of them. It will be split into two episodes because I simply cannot save up and afford them all early enough. But I thought I'd start with one that is... Well, they're all genuine ones in this, so any of the circuit cars that aren't featured in this aren't genuine as far as I know. Now, this, surprisingly, is the last car you think could be a genuine race car, but it's the Chevrolet Silverado, and if you do circuit spec, it becomes the NASCAR Silverado, which is quite a cool feature as it is identical as the lights are fake and stickers, and if you go inside, it is pretty much a NASCAR I don't know the different types of series, but we're just going to be using Golden Hills as the test track as well. I don't know if you like my liveries, but it's been trying to get the same. I'm not really one for changing the interior, but right straight away, I can tell you that it's heavy. It's really heavy, um, and it's very sluggish to set off with. But it seems, it, as in, it feels like it has power. But it, I'm guessing it's the fact that because maybe it's heavy that you can't. But surprisingly, it's not that bad at cornering. I had a quick test of it round Little Eagle Speed Drum, and it's by far like the easiest car. Like here, it's one of the easiest cars to do a proper hard let turn. Because obviously NASCARs are designed for turning. At corners at speeds of 190 so it's kind of at home when it goes around one of these long annoying corners whilst a couple of GT cars and others you have to get the line right because they don't always like going around quick but like this one around long corners it can just be a case of foot to the floor which is really fun obviously if you wanted to get a hot lap around a Grand Prix track like the one here then it's not ideal because it isn't really designed for that but it's really fun to go around little legal speed drum I've also tried I mean I don't follow all the racing series um, but if you I've tried what I mean is I tried to get the liveries very like lifelike like the genuine ones I don't know about this one though but I got I had to pick the official tires for it because I thought well, I don't want to be doing anything that isn't a genuine NASCAR rim. So, I mean, it's, it's really, surprisingly, it's really good and it's really cheap. $68,000 in-game dollars. So, you can earn that by doing two th half an hour fraction missions, which... If you do the coast uh, leaving LA, if you're in the right circuit car, you can do it in 10 minutes. So you're talking 20 minutes worth of cash here. Um, which is surprise, it's a surprising the little fun bit of kit because obviously there's always that wall rage in between proper circuit cars and NASCARs and F1 fans saying NASCARs are hillbillies and, blah, 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 and NASCAR fans saying F1s are all snobs. But I mean, you can't compare them. They're completely different and this one, they're all fun in their own reasons, like, obviously we're terrifyingly fun to drive an F1 car on here, but at the same time, this is just fun to drive, even though it's, like, slower. You just, it just feels more, le yeah, I think it feels more man and machine than man and computer. But it's a really look fun race car for the price really is really good but we must get move along to our next car we'll, we'll go up our list right this next one I didn't know well I knew it was being a genuine race car Ford GT now this isn't a race livery this is an urban livery now this one might be borderline I don't know if this one has been I know the original Ford GT was a Le Mans car and there is actually the 2005 model race car and it looked a lot similar to like, like this so I was like you know what I might as well pick it now straight away you can tell that it there's less I don't know it's definitely it's definitely lighter don't get me wrong but I still think it, yeah, I, I'm trying to think. This is. Let's see, well, see how well it goes around here. 
I mean, it's quite heavy feeling, but surprisingly, it's not that bad at, to drive at all. It's a, it's not quick for your quick sudden movements, because there's a few circuit cars that are quite quick if you obviously want to avoid an accident. This is quite heavy, so if you were playing, if you were racing this in real life and there's an accident ahead, you're not, you have to turn quite early. I mean, I, I'm, I'm guessing this is, well, the Ford GT was originally for Le Mans, so if the, if this is like the genuine 2005 race car model, then it'll be based for Le Mans, because I think there is one like this. I don't know, because obviously the original Ford GT was just the 1960s version, obviously. It was very similar to this version, but obviously um, had a few modifications and it was better for straight line speed, but I googled it and it does come up with a genuine car looking very similar to this, so it's why this is on its list. I'm not enjoying this as much as the Silverado. Not round here anyway. I don't know how it'll feel on round Little Eagle Speed Um It felt alright, but actually no, because you end up using this in one of the campaign missions. And it's okay, but it's not one your foot to the. It's not the car where you can be foot to the floor. Surprisingly, you can be foot to the floor with the Silverado around corners if you have the line right. Around corners like this, I mean, I'm foot to the floor now with this car, but a lot of the corners you're having to ease where you don't with other cars. And I'm it looks like they're going doors almost, but yeah, so. It, it's a fun car for the cir for the real life circuit cars, but I wouldn't prioritise this one. Uh, so at the moment, Silverado is on top. Right, I've got to change. We won't be doing two laps every one because we need to keep this going. Right, the next one, obviously, Dodge Viper SRT10, 2010 edition. This is the GT version. This. I'm guessing went with Le to Le Mans. Obviously, the new SRT Viper has replaced this in the GT series, but for some reason, even though that car's in the game, you don't have that race version. Straight away, this again, I can't fully judge compared to my like older circuit cars because they're more they're obviously performance rating in the thousands. These are in the 700s. So I can't really judge on them. The brakes are really good on this. It doesn't caught right. It's not as good at cornering as the other two. The Ford GT can corner better than this, and the Silverado can. It's a bit understeer heavy. It's a fun little thing at the moment. I mean, don't get me wrong, these reviews are only being tested. Oh, no, you have to ease around there. Mm, I'm a bit disappointed with this. I was expecting greater from this. I thought it would be a bit better. But it's almost identical to the performance version, which is really disappointing because the performance version's a bit understeer slash oversteer on the corners. It's heavy, sluggish, can't go around fast corners without easing. It doesn't wheel spin though, but it's not as enjoyable to drive as the other two. So I'll put this one at the bottom. Yes, at the bottom, which is quite shocking really for this how I, I, I was gonna tempt it to put it higher right let's quickly quickly move on to the next one so obviously the Silverado is on top here we go now the one I went at Pikes Peak with the Corvette ZR1 oh this car it's just amazing this car is this obviously was in Le Mans the new ones replaced it but I, I still prefer the looks of this one Right, so let's see how well it corners. Better. It's it crikey. It it corners better than the Ford GT, and in fact, 
it's right. I will probably say this is better than the Silverado cornering because I have done a faction mission of this. This is probably the best cornering car so far in this review. Um, it's actually really nimble. Um, if you if you're easing off the accelerator, it's really easy. Look how easy. Th that's the easiest car ever to have gone around that corner. I am not even kidding you, because most of the corners you have to hold your thumb in proper tight. If you if you got the line right as well, whilst that I won't even try and I, I even let go of it. It's that easy. It's the, pro such an easy car to drive. Okay, maybe so. Maybe it's not the quickest accelerating, and it doesn't have the highest top speed. If you're going down there, you can do about 230, which isn't that bad. But this is definitely a GT-like car, and it's surprising for Americans to make a car that's actually good because everyone always judges on them, saying oh, American cars not good at cornering. But this is amazing. It looks good. This is the number one circuit car so far let's move on kind of ended up moving to doing a lap with each now the Salina S7R you'll have seen this yeah it's a, I decided to add a double colour to it but now this one accelerates quicker than the Corvette though that might just be because I've obviously upgraded this a bit To be honest, I can't really judge on them early. Them early few cars I literally just bought before this episode, so they are fresh out of the circuit dealership. So no upgrades. So they will look. They will. They won't look as good because obviously when I previously reviewed this, this has improved. It's definitely one of the fastest accelerating cars. It isn't the best round. See, I tease off round there. It's. Because it's quite heavy compared to the other circuit cars, it's quite, you have to ease around, especially around corners like this. This is where I've noticed the difference compared to the Corvette. Anyway, it's definitely harder to drive. It doesn't, it doesn't like happens as much as this car either. I mean, not many of them do. But round fast corners, this is a car where you have to get the line right because if you don't, you kind of get a slap in the face from this car. But it's definitely one of the fastest accelerating cars. Kind of almost, it might remind me of the McLaren F1 and Le Mans car. I think this is more of a Le Mans specialist car for straight, more straight line speed. But I will put this at number two for the sheer pleasure and sound. So obviously Silverado has been dropped down into third. Now, obviously, I recognise this one, the BMW Z4 S Drive GT3 car. You, if you play Gran Turismo Forza, you'll recognise this. And obviously, we can confirm it's a genuine one by the steering wheel. Now, straight away, surprisingly, it feels slightly heavier, but n that's probably because I haven't done as much weight reduction on it. And the actual car was is a lot lighter than what the Celine was before I modified it. Now this is phew, this is by far the nimblest car for sure you now. On some of these corners I've had to be careful because if I do that it, you can lose control. It's a very easy car to drive. It's almost very I would pretty almost pretty much compare it to the ZR1 in driving style. It drives very similar but it tends to wheel spin less. It's not as good around the high speed, as impressive around the high speed corners as the Corvette ZR1 is, but it accelerates quicker. So they're kind of almost equal, and I know they've competed in the same competitions as each other, so I think they have anyway. But this is actually it's a really fun car, I would advise it. It's cheap. The, see, the Corvette ZR1 at the moment is number one, costs 300,000, which takes a while to get in the crew. Whilst this, I think, if you have 100,000, you can get this. So, it's the the moment is the best circuit car for the 
for the price of money the overall circuit car because the Silverado is heavy so for proper tight street racing more Grand Prix style